Happy New Year, everyone. 2018 is upon us, and what better way to open it up than a small school showdown? It might be frigid outside, but it is hot in the Bears lair here at Stonington High School, and you are watching Game Day. Live on theday.com, Casey O'Neill, along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, and we have ourselves a matchup between the Stonington Bears and the undefeated St. Bernard Saints. I like this matchup tonight, and I hope you folks at home are ready for three-pointers, because you're going to see a lot of them tonight, Casey. Both guard-oriented teams like to shoot the deep ball, being an interesting chess match on the floor tonight. Undefeated St. Bernard Saints. They're undefeated. They've been playing fantastic basketball off of that great run in the ECC tournament last year. But these Stonington Bears have guards, they have shooters, and if the JV game was any indication, we're in for a good one tonight because they were very competitive as well. Yeah, back and forth, both teams again. Three-point shot is the specialty here for Coach John Luzzi and the Stonington Bears. On the other side of things, Coach Mark Jones, no stranger to high-end basketball. You have a stat about him. Uh, yeah, Mark Jones, I, back in his glory day as a sophomore at Dayton, actually beat Dwayne Wade head-to-head -head when he was at Marquette on his trip to the Final Four. Mark Jones, big-time player, big-time coach here on the high school level. Yeah, I think they all came of age last year, including himself in that ECC tournament. A lot of players important. Why don't we talk a little bit about who the players to watch in tonight's game? Yeah, sure thing, Casey. For Stonington, how about sophomore guard Zach Scott? He's got unlimited range on the offensive end and can really shoot the basketball. Streak shooter, when he gets rolling, watch out. Zach is a tremendous teammate and has become one of the go-to guys for this Bear team and has grown to a bit of a leadership role for coach John Luzzi on the floor. And for St. Bernard's, another junior guard, Max Lee. Sees the court extremely well. Tremendous, Casey, basketball instinct. Uh, Lee scraps on the defensive end and challenges every single 50-50 ball. Max had a tendency every once in a while to be a little bit unselfish. A great teammate, Coach Mark Jones, would actually like to see him score more on the offensive end. Two players to watch. You know, the word team is sometimes seen as an acronym for together, everyone achieves more. For the Stonington Bears, it's embracing this aspect of unity that has led to closeness and success. Hey, wait. Why are we not in a defensive position zone? I always felt like we had some unity, but I never felt like we were truly had that family aspect. So um, coming into the season, I made it of absolute utmost importance to try to create, you know, a sense every day that everyone mattered and that we were truly were, you know, together. To me, like team unity is like they're brothers. I love how aggressive this big guy's being. Everybody give me a hand. They have to be there for each other, not just on the basketball court, but in the classroom, in the hallways, always looking out for one another. It's something I feel that we've kind of struggled with in years past, at least that I've been playing. Maybe a couple people will be friends on the team and others will be kind of disconnected. But here everyone is comfortable playing with one another and that's what it brings when you're when you know who you're playing with and friends with who you're playing with, you kind of get that chemistry and you're comfortable on the court. We have a lot of people that have played, they're younger, but they play like they're older, like Zach. Zach's played like he's a senior since he was a freshman. Lennox has played like he's a senior since he's a freshman. They all know what they're supposed to do. They know all know how to play. And we just, we accept that. Like they know what they're doing. We know what we're doing. We can do this together. And we just have a group of kids that are so selfless and so unselfish that they just, they don't care. They don't care who scores. They don't care who gets the rebound. At the end of the game, they just want to know that everybody gave their best effort. Nobody is worried about their points at the end of the game or their stats. We all just play to win. It makes the game so much more fun when you're playing with a bunch of people and everyone's enjoying it. It makes it more fun for yourself. That's really what it comes down to. They really, really have come together and really grasped that unity uh, aspect, which is awesome. I and mean, they love each other. It's a great group of kids. You know, I had a chance to talk to Coach Luzzi a few weeks ago, and he told me, Casey, his fourth year here as the head coach, the team and the program starting to gel and become what he envisioned four years ago, and the kids are really buying in, play with a lot of chemistry. Well, the word on the back of the jersey says it all, and that word is together so it might be bears on the front but it's together on the back on the other side of things you know max lee and hunter belarjan have been friends for over 10 years they stuck together and they took a chance to go play for mark jones 
Now they continue to complement each other as they look for a special season here at St. Bernard's. Me and Hunter met in like third grade in Little League Baseball. The first time I met Max, I was actually at a batting cage in Norwich and he came along and he started to like get some swings and ever since then we've kind of had like, a connection like we're really close friends. I think we have a much different style. I'm, I'm more of like a passer so I'm more looking for Hunter and Hunter's a very good shooter so he just, I try to get him the ball when he's open and he makes a lot of shots for us. He is like a phenomenal passer. I know I'm gonna get the ball in a great spot. Those those no look passes which you're gonna see and it's awesome because we can put the ball in the hoop and we can pass it. I think that's gonna be tough for other teams to do, uh, to defend. To me, that was a hard decision for those kids, you know, for Max and Hunter to leave their friends that they've been with, you know, growing up, that they dreamed of, you know, playing together. NFA was kind of like the go-to place to go to. We actually tried to get more friends to come with us, but they were scared and like they don't really want to come with us. It was really tough, but we knew Mark Jones was the, like one of the best coaches and he was going to give us a great opportunity. Both our families felt confident that we could do big things over here. We wanted to like forge our own path. For them to come over here, man, I, I mean, that says a lot to me, you know, and I'm glad that they entrusted in me. I'm very confident with the team this year. I think we could do big things. We're already 4-0, so I think sky's the limit. We're looking to just take every game one step at a time, but obviously our, our big goal is in that state championship. They take the game serious, you know, and they're serious about the game and they want to win and they want to be great. And, you know, when Max talks about state titles and Hunter's talking about state titles, like that brings a different feel to your team. We got a lot of weapons that I think other teams are going to have to really look out for. We're obviously hoping for a state championship, but uh, we just got to take it one game at a time and hopefully we go undefeated this season. Real excited for this game. Uh, we want this one real bad and we're ready to take on Stonington. Let's get zero there, all right? Let's win this championship. Let's go. Let's go. Well, friends and family, Casey, right there. Uh, both of these kids, childhood friends, their families hang out together. You know, Steve Lee, Max's dad, is in the Norwich Sports Hall of Fame. I mean, and again, just the tremendous trust and head coach of Mark Jones in coming to this program. Well, it says a lot. You know, you were talking about Mark Jones's pedigree earlier, and that's the kind of thing they wanted to play for somebody who had been in the, those big situations. And that's quite a leap to leave your friends to come over and play at a place like St. Bernard's. Not only friends, but a big time program like NFA. A lot of trust in head coach Mark Jones. Well, we're ready for some primetime action here. It's a small school showdown. You're listening and watching Game Day live on theday.com. I'm Miranda Ruda, and I go to Storrington High School. I'm a junior, and I can be considered a midfielder or a forward. My most memorable game was probably the East Lime game, the second time we played them. We beat them 5-2, to two, I think, and I had two backhand hits, which is kind of my specialty. Like, no one else on the team can do it, and so like when I'm able to like score off of backhand hit, it's kind of, it's a big thing. I have a JV basketball coach, and his name is Ryan Herrings. He doesn't work at Stonington anymore, but he kind of told me a lot about leadership and holding yourself accountable to things that you do. And so I think every single time that I play a game, I think like even if I do make a mistake, it's not the team's fault, it's my own fault. But if someone else makes a mistake, I should also be holding myself accountable because they are a team member. And he's been a huge influence on me. I have basketball next, <laughs> and basketball hasn't really stopped. I've been, I was doing basketball during field hockey season, I do it during softball season, and I do it all over the summer. And I think it's a big year for us, like we're really focused, all of us work hard in the gym, and I'm actually missing basketball practice right now. <laughs> the following is a presentation of The Day. It is a new year, and with it comes resolutions and renewed expectations. Last year, St. Bernard was the darling of the ECC tournament, with an epic run to the finals. This year, they are resolved to go the extra step and bring home a championship, and they have met all the early season expectations. Max Lee, Hunter Belarjan, and Joseph Beltran have been dynamite. 
for a balanced Saints team well coached by Mark Jones. Stonington is resolved to make their mark in both the ECC and state tournaments and have also met their early season expectations. The dynamic backcourt of RJ Perilla and Zach Scott have been electric and head coach John Luzzi likes his young team. For two small schools with large expectations, tonight is an early season test and they are both resolute. It's an ECC showdown between the St. Bernard Saints and the Stonington Bears. It's live and it's next on game day, live on theday.com. Showdown, but one of these teams undefeated sports doctor, the St. Bernard Saints at 5-0, have taken on all comers so far. Got to be good for the league to have a team undefeated like St. Pete's. Yeah, and the league has done very well across the state, Casey, pre-New uh, pre Year's, as they would say. And, you know, wet, you know right now, Stonington, a couple of tough losses. Westerly, you know, Cherahoe, a loss to Plainfield. They're looking forward to get back at the league play and seeing what they really got as a team. Yeah, for Stonington tonight, they're going to have to rely on on, their, on those guards you talked about. And for St. Bernard's, it's just about playing with the, the chemistry that they've already got going. So why don't we talk a little bit about the keys to tonight's game? Sure thing, Casey. The sports doctors, keys to the game. For the Stonington Bears, how about take care of the rock? Stonington can't afford to have any turnovers or wasted trips on the offensive end. One and done. Control a defensive glass and don't give the Saints second chance opportunities. And don't be one dimensionals. The Bears tend to fall in love with the three. They're going to have to find a way to get to the rim. For the Saints, move the ball. Rhythm and tempo will create open looks for the Saints on the offensive end. Five guys on the boards. With a four guard offense, the entire team will be called upon to rebound on both ends of the floor. And Casey, how about the big shot? Which talented player will step up? and make the big shot come crunch time for Mark Jones and the Saints. You know, earlier in the JV game, we saw some of the kids, because these teams are young, so they had some kids in the JV game that are going to be seen in this varsity game. And not only did we get a chance to see them run, but we got a chance to see there's a lot of very skilled players, uh, especially on the guards, some versatile players. I mean, uh, Belarjan and, and Lee uh, and Williams, I mean, very, very skilled on the other side of things. You know, Scott can shoot. Lennox Deer plays like a deer. Yeah, no, he, tremendous Casey. Athletes on both sides. You know, and the thing with St. Bernard's and with Stonington being a little guard-oriented, sometimes their guards are called upon to do different things. Guard the big people in the block, you know, mix it up on the baseline a little bit, grab some rebounds. A little bit do it all for both these teams. In order for Stonington to really stay in this thing, they got to shoot it from three, right? Yeah, they have to knock down some three-pointers, yes. Well, to find out about those and all the rest of the players, let's meet them here tonight. Lennox Deer, West Broad Elementary. RJ Prill at Dean's Mill. Zach Scott, West Broad Street School. Marquise Jackson, West Broad Street. Justin McKenna, Wheeler Elementary. Jacob Geary, Dean's Mill. Anthony Fry, West Broad. Dave DeFanti, Dean's Mill School. Peter Farnholz, Dean's Mill. Aiden Davies, Ledger Center School. Aiden Morrison, West Broad Street. Aiden Borsher, West Broad Street. Max Lee, Moriarty Elementary School. Hunter Belargin, St. Patrick School. Connor Fobb, Griswold Elementary. Joseph Beltran, Huntington Elementary. DeAndre Williams, Huntington Elementary. Brian Bergeron, St. Joseph School. Jordan Shelton, Preston Veterans Elementary. Nathaniel Avery, Sacred Heart Groton. Stanley Maynard, Oswegachi Elementary. Cameron Bodet, Preston Veterans Elementary. It's the Sports Doctor, Keith O'Brien. You want to hear from local coaches, athletes, and personalities? Well, how about giving my weekly podcast a listen? I mean, do you have a kid in mind, though, John, who would take the uh, last shot down by two with, uh, say, six seconds left? God almighty. I mean, I give you a look at sports from a fan's perspective as well. Do you have a problem with him pulling up for about 35 feet, you know, from the basket, Coach? Um, we have had talks about this. The Sports Doctor here on the day.com.
Lost though as Lee was well defended and Perilla. A little head fake, nice job, but a little sloppy on the end line and it will stay. No, it'll be over St. Bernard's basketball. You know, the same mistakes we always see in a high school game, dribbling through the pressure, you know, head down, trying to make something happen with the dribble instead of passing the ball. Early in the ball game, teams feeling each other out a little bit. Belarjan, crossover, heads to the basket. Floater no good, blocked by Deer up ahead, coming the other way. Layup no good, rebound underneath Jackson with the putback and is good. Marquise Jackson with all five of Stonington's points. Yeah, two by the rim, little garbage points there, a little hustle, get down and uh, hit the glass and get rewarded for the dirty work. I like the energy for the Stonington guard. St. Bernard will reset. Belarjan. Guarded by Deer. That's a nice matchup there. Belarjan tries to go baseline, loses it off his leg, but Lee, nice look inside, but can't finish. Good look by Max Lee that time, but Ber uh, Bergeron couldn't finish the layup. Deer the other way, wild into the lane. It's tipped out of bounds, and it will stay Stonington ball, and we'll have our first substitutions of the game. As we'll see Joseph Beltran and Stanley Maynard into the game for St. Bernard's. Talk about Lennox Deer on a defensive end, very long. Creates a mismatch out there for any guard. He's a, he's a bit of a forward athletic. Make things happen on the offensive end as well. Three from Perilla is in and out. Tipped out of bounds, it will be St. Bernard ball. Perilla. Nice hustle play there, sorry Casey. Nice hustle play by Jackson. Trying to manufacture another, another offensive rebound. I like the energy so far by number one, Marquise Jackson. Wide open three is up and back iron no good. Perilla with the rebound. Stonington looking to push now. Perilla pulls up from the foul line. Back iron no good. Tipped around and controlled underneath by Deer. Swings it. Long three pointer is good. Marquise. You start shooting like that, you get one name. Yeah. Number one. One name for number one. Bring in the energy. Junior guard. Stonington intercepts the pass as St. Bernard's was sloppy. Perilla loses it, but it'll be off St. Bernard's and it'll be another turnover. Yeah, one thing I noticed early in this game too, Casey, is the length of Stonington. Seemed to be giving St. Bernard's a little bit of trouble in the passing lanes. You know, Perilla, you know, Deer, uh, very, you know, very, not very big guys, but long and athletic. RJ Perilla, a football player, tremendous basketball player as well. Feels like he's been playing here for 26 uh, years. Yeah. Deer. Drives with the right hand, long three by Fry is no good. And a big up rebound yanked down by Beltron, and he'll push for the Saints. Beltron all the way, kicks it into the corner. And the Saints will reset as they go back up top with Williams. Svab wanted the three, but thought better of it. Beltron, little floater runner in the lane is good. Joseph Beltron, nice move there, gets the Saints within three. Jackson guarded by Williams. Patience out there. Max Lee doing a nice job on Scott. Shadowing him, trying to pick up on him. There's Scott's first three, no good, but the rebound by Fry, and he loses it. It'll be St. Bernard Ball. Yeah, I like the defense by Lee that time. You know, he kind of closed out on Scott. He didn't give him any empty space. He kind of had to rush the shot and he shoved it right. Jordan Shelton into the ball game. So St. Bernard's already showing an eight deep here in the early going. An eight three-point attempts already in this ball game today. First four minutes. Williams swings it over to Shelton. Inside Lee, drives to the basket, flips it out, long three. Williams, no good side, and Deer rebounds. Perilla looks to push now for the Bears. Crosses over with a left, spin move in the lane, and a nice look underneath to Deer. St. Bernard's recovers. And we're going to get a jump ball as Deer try to get through the lane. Now they're going to say travel. Good call. I'm going to go with the outside ref. That was a good call. A walk there. Again, a good job by Stonington getting back on D, taking away the passing lanes, doing very well on defensive end, coming back on the other end. They got a little taste of the St. Bernard's medicine as well. A little slow moving game here in the early going. Belarjan. With the basketball, guarded by Deer, looks a mismatch, gets a screen from Avery, and all the way to the basket. 
Smooth Hunter Belarjan for two. Oh, there you go. I mean, who are you going to call on? You know, high screen and roll there with the big man, Nate Avery, and Belarjan takes it right in. Jackson, long three, back iron, no good. Avery, the big sophomore with the rebound for the Saints. Looking to push now. Beltran kicks out. Three-pointer by Shelton is in and out. You know, Avery's one of those kids, Kate, so you can do some things outside of scoring the basketball for St. Bernard to be successful. Rebounding on a defensive end, high screens on your offensive end. Here's a matchup between two youngins. Jacob Geary with a jumper over Avery. Jacob Geary just into the game. He's got some offensive skills. I like the touch, the extension, the delivery by the big fella. Drive to the basket. Nice move. No, nothing there, though, as Beltron couldn't get it to go. Perilla comes the other way. Uh, had it to Jackson, but lost the handle. Out of the pack comes Belarjan. Two on one. Belarjan, feet underneath. Foul as Beltron drew contact, and he'll shoot two. So Beltron that time drew the contact, and he'll go to the line with a chance to bring the Saints a little closer. Yeah, you got to kind of try and pick up and stop the ball the sooner before he gets that far into the paint. There's a nice push there by the Saints, and then uh, we'll set up their guy, um, Beltron, at the line. First one is good, and Cameron Bodette comes into the game for St. Burns. Avery will take a seat. First foul of the basketball game, six minutes in. Oh, we like that. Yeah. Two from the line for by Beltron, and it'll be a one-point game. Saints are going to employ a little full-court man-to-man pressure now. Deer inbounds. Perilla in the corner. Trappable spot. Back passes to Deer, and Deer will bring it up against Lee. Nice has a big man that can dribble. Deer loses it, however. Geary kicks out Scott for three. And there it is. Oh, uh, there it is, the... the, the, the the recognition from the big fella on the wing to Scott, rise and shine, Zach Scott. 13-9, early Stonington lead. Belarjan wanted to pull the trigger, instead swings it to Shelton. And the Saints will run an offense. Williams now with a left hand. Nice look underneath to Bodette, but he was up and down as he was harassed by Geary, and that'll be a turnover. Yeah, Geary paying uh, dividends in the ballgame case. He's knocked down a jump shot. Uh, dished in the corner for an assist and then uh, forced a turnover on a defensive end. I, li I like the, uh, the athleticism by the big fella. More full court pressure by the Saints. Scott back to Perilla. Fry is going to bring it up over half court. Swings. Jackson. Scott. Fry drives. Left hand. A little right hand floater in the lane is good. Nice move by Anthony Fry. Good move. Freshman to the rim. Saw the look in the lane, and again, no rim protector really for the Saints. He had a red carpet ride right in. Williams now Belarjan. Belarjan drives with the left hand. Kicks it down. A little jumper by Lee is good. There's the teammates and buddies. Belarjan to Lee for two. Max Lee on the scoreboard. Fry with Scott passes up the three. Now resets the offense for the Bears. A little pick and roll with Perilla. Perilla instead pulls up just inside the three-point line and buries it. The tough two for RJ Perilla. 30 seconds remaining now. Belarjan with the basketball. Crosses over. Stays with the left. Silky smooth and buries it. Uh, Hunter Belarjan is a scorer. Uh, he can rise up for a guard and knock it down. Full extension on the jump shot. Scott. Looking for the last shot out of the Bears. Scott wants a pick instead. Drives to the basket. Floater, no good. Ball loose. Out of the pack comes Belarjan. Quickly down the floor to a cutting lead. A basket at the buzzer. The longtime friends and teammates have that special chemistry, and they bring the Saints to within two, 17-15. You are watching Game Day live on theday.com. It's the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. You want to hear from local coaches, athletes, and personalities? Well, how about giving my weekly podcast a listen? I mean, do you have a kid in mind, though, John, who would take the uh, last shot down by two with, uh, say, six seconds left? God almighty. I mean... 
I give you a look at sports from a fan's perspective as well. Do you have a problem with him pulling up from about 35 feet, you know, from the basket, Coach? Um, we have had talks about this. The Sports Doctor here on the Day.com. Game Day is brought to you by the award-winning Submarine Car Wash and Detail Center. Located on Route 12 in Groton, they're your local experts in auto detailing. A variety of car wash coupons are available on theday.com. Print and stop in today. You realize we're in the bear's lair. Uh, there once was a bear and he had a lair, but did anyone care for this solitary bear? There once was a pair of these two Stonington bears, but one left. Thus the apostrophe shifted, and now it's the bear's lair. The bears, you're in mid-season form. Uh, the bear's lair featuring a deer in Lennox Deer. There's a deer in the bear's lair. That's a gutsy deer. Deer is very near. Oh, looks, you know, look good for you, sports doctor. <laughs> I got to tell you, I got to be honest with you. You are very handsome in the yeah. uh, podcast uh, promo. Yeah. That, looks, that looks like you know what you're talking about. Uh, you? Sometimes. That's very, very <laughs> it's, it's all the producer, Peter Wappy. So one quarter in and uh, a little early burst by Stonington, but St. Bernard seemed to come around there at the end of the quarter. And uh, Bellagio, I mean, uh, Bellagian could just take over this game. You can see it. He and Lee really work well together. Yeah, ready to stew and get things cooking out there. And as advertised, Casey, 11 three-point shots total by both teams in the first quarter. Have arms, we'll shoot. Nice look inside. Beltran kicks it back out. Williams long three. No good. Weak side rebound. Geary. Opportunity missed that time. Perilla always pushing with the basketball. Finds Scott. Drives. Tries to pass, but it's tipped by Beltron. There's no size on the floor right now for St. Bernard's. If I was the Bears, I'd be looking for Geary's, Geary's calling for the ball. Yeah, Max Lee's on Geary. Yeah, you got to re reward him. Uh, Belarjan jumps it for St. Bernard's with the steal all alone. Layup is good, and we're all tied up. Brand new ball game. Hunter Belarjan taking this thing over a little bit. You got a little bit of a. Gratuitous non-call at half court there. Deer, guarded by Belarjan, takes him with a dribble. Stolen by Williams. Three on one. Williams all the way, dishes last second. And the layup is made by Spob, and that is the first, check that. That is Spob's second basket of the game, and the first lead by the Saints. Now you've got to recognize where the double team is coming from and find the open man. Stonington's got open shooters diving to the corner, so if you're Lennox Deer, find the open man. Don't dribble through the pressure. Scott finds Perla in the corner. Three ball, no good. Back iron. Williams can't get to the rebound as Deer nicely does. Now Deer drives wildly. I think right now, Casey, Stonington would be beneficial from the extra pass. Uh, a little too much hero basketball, a little too much one-on-one -on -one stuff. Pass the ball, trust your teammates, you're going to get open looks. Yeah, and Lennox Deer, who is a fantastic athlete, trying to do a little too much right now. His skill set is best suited for hustle plays, finishing around the basket, uh, probably not so much taking it off the dribble like he has been. Yeah, get him on the block. Yeah. Get him on the block. Let's have him make a play. Long three, Lee. Oh, back iron, no good. Rebound, Geary. All the way to the basket. Nice job on the block that time by Bergeron. Perilla, dangerous pass to Fry. Three-pointer, no good. Geary with the rebound. Like you said, no size sports doctor. And Geary uncontested on the putback. Yeah, and again, didn't bring the ball down. Catch it high, shoot it high was Jake McGeary. Three short that time by Svab, and out of the pack comes Perilla. Fry. Wanted the three, hounded by Belarjan. Gets a screen now, goes baseline, swings it. Scott, good look, open three, in and out. There's a lid. We're going to get a foul on Geary. There's a lid on the basket down here for Stonington right now. Yeah, and again, no, I like the persistence to trying to get to the rim by Fry, find the open shooter in the corner, stick with it. The shots will, attempt, will eventually fall, you hope, if you're Coach John Leslie. That was a good look that time from the corner by Clean. Scott. I mean, that's the shot. He knocks that shot down uh, more than half the time. Svab swings to Beltron. Beltron crosses over. Had a backdoor lead, didn't see him. Instead, up top, Belarjan. Belarjan foregoes it, goes back in the corner, and the Saints are going to work for a shot. Belarjan's good, good footwork with the ball. Nice jab step. Beltran pulls up inside the foul line, no good. Follows his own shot. Kicks it out to Svab, who goes baseline. Tried to find Belarjan, but it's intercepted by McKenna. Swings it to Perilla in the corner. Fry 
Three ball. Got it. Anthony Fry. And again, Casey, the extra pass on the offensive end for the Bears. Finding the opening guy in the corner. Fry likes that spot. Yeah, sophomore guard Justin McKenna giving a little bit of energy here to the Saint, uh, to, excuse me, to the Bears. With a steal and a nice look. Pelargin, baseline, hangs in the air, no good. Geary, right now Geary has got more size than the Saints can handle. And immediately we see Nate Avery getting into the game for the Saints. Big man's open, give him the basketball. Oh, good move by... Geary, oh, but a little flop, flop action that time. Stop. Nice flop by Bergeron, draws the foul. Give Brian Bergeron credit, because he did a he did a little Marcus Smart right there. Yeah, he did. Uh, boy, how much has Geary improved from last year? Boy, oh boy, just, you know, he's really asserted himself here, and he's, you know, he did back to the basket. He's uh, doing some dirty work at the rim. And I see some, you said we went from no size. Now we're going to see Nate Avery come in. He's only a sophomore. But number 42 of Stonington, Aiden Morrison's a freshman. They have two big bodies coming into the game here. And they're going to be banging with each other as size suddenly is in the ball game on both ends. Three team fouls against the Bears and zero against the Saints. For those of you keeping score at home. Lee drives baseline, finds Avery. A little layup underneath is good. Great look from Max Lee to Nate Avery. Pulls the Saints to within a bucket. Yeah, good look, the recognition, the big man making himself available. That's huge on a high school level. Perilla swings it to Jackson. St. Burns like to double, double team the basketball when it gets to the top, trying to disrupt the shooters of the, Saint, of the Bears. McKenna stepped through. We're going to get a reach and foul. Looks like that's going to be on Belarjan. First foul of the ball game. First team foul against the Saints. And Fry will inbound underneath his own basket. We'll kick it up top to McKenna. Crosses over, kicks, Perilla, three ball. Is no good, and it's going to be tipped out of bounds by Morrison, and it'll be Saints ball. R.J. Perilla with the old school, almost like a set shot. Or Patsy Weber. Set shot, Rick Barry style. That'd be Warren Weber for you, Warren. Warren Patsy Weber, Weber, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drive, Belarjan, crazy out of control. We're going to see the call is going to go the other way. That's that time, Belarjan yeah. was out of control. That's got to be something. I was going to travel or charge or Mark Jones is calling for a defensive foul. I don't, I don't think he's got a leg to stand on there. See, I like the no call. No call, balls yeah. out of bounds. It's turnover to Stonington. Re reward Stonington for good defense. That, on the other hand, is going to be a foul on the floor and a shot to the face. Belarjan that time got an elbow from McKenna. And Mark Jones does not like that. And you're going to see, it looks like the little blood coming out of the nose of Belarge. Yeah, he's going to have to get checked out. Second foul quickly on two on Hunter Belarge. He's going to have to come out of the game. Yeah, he's a competitor. He's a, he's a tough kid. And get him looked at. They're going to send Svab back into the game. Fry will inbound. Great defense, so they send it up top to Scott. Back Saint to McKenna, and they'll run an offense. Saints did a nice job here as far as shadowing Scott. He hasn't had a lot of open looks. Sharp shooter for the Bears. McKenna to Scott. Pulls up, three. Short, great defense by Williams, who gets the rebound. Looks to push for the Saints. A little crossover all the way to the lane. Can't finish. And instead, Jackson pulls the rebound down. Outlets to Deer. And off of Scott's hands, wasn't ready for the pass. Turnover. Good defense that time, Casey, by the Saints. Stepping up, stopping the ball, challenging Lennox Deer, keeping him away from the rim and forcing him into the air and pass. Low scoring game here. We thought we might see some offensive fireworks, but both teams really playing better defense. Beltron drives. Oh, and it blocked. It looked like it was clean. Blocked by Jackson, but they're going to get a foul inside instead. They're going to call that foul on... Who are they going to call that on? Deer. Lennox Deer is going to get the foul. Looks like a clean block by Jackson, but they're going to get Deer with a body, and that'll send Beltron to the line to shoot two. Call that foul on number three. There is no, there is no number three. I assume they were calling it on 30. 
Now they change it to 10. All right, but 10 is they're calling it on. Justin McKenna. Oh, McKenna. All right. First one is good by Beltran, and we're all knotted up at 22. And Bodette comes back into the ball game. Saints with a chance to get back on top, and just on clockwork, that free throw is no good, and we're tied at 22. McKenna runs the offense for Stonington, guarded by Svab. Drives in the corner to Scott. Fry passes up a three. Good defense by Lee and a timeout. First one of those, too, by John Luzzi, and they're going to talk it over. Yeah, Casey had a good timeout, too, because I think the offense has become very stagnant for Stonington in the half-court set. They're not making the extra pass. They're not crisp. Uh, four guys standing around watching one guy dribble the basketball. Yeah, Stonington's at it. Well, I'll tell you, they've, they've done a great job, like you said, on Scott. And it seems like they're trying to work the ball to him. And they don't really have anyone else moving without the basketball right now. So you got to, you know, cut, cut to the basket, find some guys moving around. They are very perimeter oriented. Right. And, and penetration and then kicking the ball to the corner, I like that style of basketball. But when, you know, the point guard's got the ball at the, at the elbow extended at the three-point line and four guys are not moving sitting around watching him, that's stagnant stale basketball. Yeah, that looks like fifth grade travel basketball. So yeah, and like you know that well. I, I think John Luzzi saw the same thing. That's why he called the timeout. You know, and the thing about the, the drive and dish sports doctor is, you, first of all, you have to have a guy who they respect on the drive. Right. Because otherwise you're not going to get anybody to leave their man and you're not going to have a dish. So, you know, McKenna has got to show that he can finish or Jackson's got to show that he can finish. Inbound is stolen by Williams and stolen back by Deer. Numbers up ahead to Scott. Underneath layup is good. Lennox Deer with a nice dish to Scott for the basket. And a heads up the pass, the, uh, the recognition by Lennox Deer. Now you're going to see a little pressure here by the Bears. Beltron beats it, lofts it over Svob's head off the state championship golf 1979 <laughs> banner. <laughs> so there we see a little pressure there by the, by the Bears off of a made basket. New wrinkle by Coach John Luzzi. McKenna drives to the basket. Floater is good, and there's what we talked about. You got to do that in order for them to respect the drive. Nice move by Justin McKenna. Right back into some full court pressure, a timeout by Mark Jones. So, you know, the game was tied at 22 22. A couple timeouts. Now we got a chess match in the ballgame. And we're going to see Belarjan check back into the ballgame. Boy, are the Saints a different team with Hunter Belarjan out of the game. Yeah. Uh, looking like a little, little lost offensively. Yeah, I mean, he seems to do a little bit of everything out there. He's a facilitator, he's a leader, he's a scorer. Uh, he's a kid that can make things happen. You're right. He's, uh, he's also an extension of the coach on the floor. I would be interested to see what would happen if Coach Luzzi put Morrison, Deere, and Geary into the game at the same time and just force St. Bernard's to put Nate Avery on the court as well. Because I think St. Bernard's, Avery does some good things, but I also think St. Bernard's likes to play the smaller, more uh, versatile lineup. But I think you could put. I think they could put some size. Stonington could put some size out there. Could give them real problems. Right. Would would you would you leave yourself open to the three point shot though? That, okay that'd be that. my only thing. I mean, maybe the guards would be too quick for the big men down low. I mean, yeah, again, you're trying to do the chess match. You're trying to look for the uh, for the advantage. I see an undersized Saints team. I don't want to make Belarjan have to work against the big. Already has the fouls. He's worked a lot. He has. Him and Max Lee. Yeah. Right back into the uh, full court pressure. A little. 1-2-2. Two, two. You see Belarjan and Lee. Belarjan draws the double over the top to Lee. Nobody in the middle of the floor, though, for the Saints. It now they Williams. got Williams you know, cutting Svob. Svob, nothing there. Nice rebound on the backside by Jackson. Oh, Jackson's over backdoor. Back they didn't get That's it. A... They didn't see it. Wow. Break for Stonington. McKenna pulls up. Three ball. Short. Front iron. Beltran comes out of the pack. He's got Belarjan. Takes it himself. Layup is good. Nice move, Joseph Beltron. Beltron with six points of the junior guard. Not afraid to take it to the cup. Number three for two. McKenna tried to kick it to Deer. Turnover, and just like that, the Saints with an opportunity to get back tied in this ballgame. So Perilla checks in, and he'll replace Fry. You know, Casey, both teams seem to be a little susceptible to the pressure, whether it's in the uh, half-court set or a full court right here. Max Lee, yes, they're telling, he's telling Williams, don't leave your guy. Stay back and give him a little help. Lee, oh, zip pass underneath the Beltran. What a look. Max Lee from half court zipped it into Beltran, and we're all tied. Yeah, back-to-back -back buckets for Beltran. Eight points leading the way for the Saints here in the first half. 
Three ball, Scott, no good back iron, rebound, Beltron. Max Lee looking to push. In the corner, Beltron, three, good. Joseph Beltron has put the Saints on top three. A game of back and forth, McKenna. Running the point for Stonington now. Gets a pick by Perilla. Nice little give and go. Perilla with the finish. A little pick and roll action between McKenna and Perilla. Brings Stonington to with a point. Pressure and a turnover as Belarjan loses it off the left hand. And with 10.8 remaining here in the half, Stonington with an opportunity to take the lead going into halftime. Perilla will inbound on the far court. Far sideline, he'll go to McKenna. And we are under 10, last chance here for the Bears. There's the pick and roll again, this time Jackson, long three. No good, rebound Lee, full court, off the side of the glass. And we are at halftime, and the St. Bernard Saints have a slim one, to, uh, one point lead, 29 to 28. The sports doctor is with Coach Mark Jones. Head Coach Mark Jones up by one at the halftime. Uh, how do you get this offense in gear in the second half? Well, we just got to take care of the ball. We got too many silly uh, mistakes in the backcourt, too. And we're giving them too many easy shots, too. So we got to take care of the ball, and then we get some good shots, and we'll live with the results. With the small lineup, did that big people give you trouble up front? Geary, uh, Deer a little bit at the rim? No, I think the guards are giving us trouble because they're just driving downhill, and then they're kicking it out to the shooters. So we got to keep guys in front of us and keep these guys out of the lane. How do you close out this game, and what's the message at, at halftime? We just got to play play better. Our, our stars got to play better. We got to play smarter. All right, good luck in the second half. Listen, close game, Casey. One point here at Stonington High School. Mark Jones, ready to go and talk to his team in the locker room. Thank you very much, Sports Doctor. We will have a nice halftime show, second half action, all coming on the other side. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Emily's just been a great player for us for all four years here. We kind of moved her into a different role this year, and she's really stepped up and, and gotten that done for us. We moved her from you know defensive midfield to forward later in the season, and she's been scoring a bunch of goals for us. Really has made a difference. We kind of just hit like halfway, I'd say, in the schedule, and Shane was like, "We need to change it up. You know, we need to get players moving in different positions." He put me up top, which was nerve-wracking. We went to Lyman, and I was. So nervous, I was like, oh my God, forward, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. And then it worked out, but honestly, I don't think it's just me being up top, it's everyone, you know, changing. We had a freshman in the midfield who's working hard, sophomore in the midfield, and then another sophomore, and like, they're creating the opportunities for me. Captain Emily Smith. So the first three seasons, her job was basically to link our defense to our attack. You know, when we would win the ball back, we would try and find Emily's feet with the ball, and she would either dribble into space and then find a, a through ball to a forward or dribble all the way forward with it. But her, it was more of a link-up role rather than the, the focus of our, uh, of our attacking play. Her sole responsibility now is putting it in the net. When I get the ball, instead of like look up, look for someone else, it was like this time you're like in front of the goal, and that was a weird transition for me. As I'm, I usually like to set people up, then take that last shot. I've coached her for, for a long time. I coached her for Premier for, for five years before we got here. So, I, you know, when she was 10, she played forward. So I was hoping maybe we could channel a little bit of that back. Um, and it, uh, it certainly seemed to work. It's awesome, that feeling, you know, you hit the ball right and, like, you just see it sail into the back and you're just like, that was a good one. And, like, those are my favorite when you just, like, it comes off the foot and you're like, yeah, that was a good one. Welcome back to Stonington High School, where the visiting and undefeated St. Bernard Saints have a slim 29-28 over the home Stonington Bears. Our own sports doctor has a special halftime guest, Stonington indoor track coach Ben Bound, sports doctor. All right, Casey, Stonington indoor and outdoor track, uh, head coach Ben Bound. Uh, ben, sixth year here at Stonington, yep. um, ECC uh, champs last year. Talk about you know the growth that you've seen in, in the program here at Stonington in the last five or six years. Uh, when I started with the program about six years ago, it was about 25, 30 athletes, and it, it steadily grew over the past few years. Uh, last year, we had about 110 on the indoor team, 80 on the outdoor team. And this year, we started with about 105 on the indoor team, and we'll probably have about 80 again on the outdoor team. So it's grown quite a bit in six years. What, what makes the numbers grow? What piques interest in a program? 
Um, it, kids just, they really love coming out and they love working hard and track and field is such a great sport where if you really dedicate yourself and, and, you, and you put yourself out there and you work really hard, you can see yourself getting better. You get a time, you get a distance, you get a jump, you get a throw and you can see that progression. And so we really focus on, you know, the kids improvement no matter if they're a Cam Whalen of the world or if they're a kid just starting out. Um, we, we focus and we celebrate all their improvement. Yeah, so when you talk about, you know, cross training in sports too, you know, track and field's got to help the football players, yeah. you know, the, the soccer players. Yeah. I mean, the, the overall conditioning, what makes you know, track and field fun? Uh, I think it's just the environment and the, and the success that kids really enjoy. And we try to keep it fun because, you know, a lot of the stuff that we do, other, you know, people do is just training. So uh, we try to have fun with the kids, too, at the same time. And, and success is, is fun and winning is fun. And kids like to come out and go to meets and, and do really well. And, the, and that spreads excitement. Um, and speaking of soccer, um, you know, a couple of years ago when the, the boys soccer team, all that, sure. that group of seniors were all freshmen, they came out for track. Cam Whalen's older brother, you know, got on the recruiting trail yeah. and said, hey guys, come out and do this. It's going to help prepare you for soccer. And uh, Coach DeCastro saw that the next season, their sophomore year, he said, man, these guys are in great shape. So then he started encouraging all of his players to come out for track. So we have a huge, huge uh, number of, of players that come from the soccer program, which yeah. is, is fantastic. We help each other out, yeah. and you, you can see it. You've got a special weekend coming up. I yep. mean, this team is heading out to the Dartmouth Relays this weekend? Dartmouth Relays. It is one of the most prestigious indoor track and field meets on the East Coast, if not the country. Um, last year when we were there, some of the fastest times in the country we ran at this meet, so we're really excited to go. We're going up with about 30 athletes this weekend. The parents are uh, footing the bill and taking them up there. We are really, really excited. Well, real quick in the last 30 seconds or so, talk about some of the special student athletes you may have this year. Uh, we have so many. We really just have a great team. It's hard to really narrow it down. Um, you know, like this weekend, Cam Whalen's a number four seed in the hurdles. Reese Hammond is going to be in the fastest heat of the thousand. That thousand meter race last year saw some of the fastest times of the year. Our girls 4 by 8 which were state champions last year, they're going to be in the fast heat of the 4 by 8 uh, Grayson Del Grosso is going to be in the in the top flight of the shot put. We're just we're super excited. We're going to try to qualify for some national level competition as well. So it's going to be a really exciting weekend. Yeah, it's great stuff, Casey, at halftime of game day to talk to some of these coaches from other sports and find out great things that are happening at the high schools and the communities. Coach, good luck this year and good luck in Dartmouth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sports doctor. Some other action tonight with ECC teams involved. Currently at the half, Waterford with a 45-19 to lead over Plainfield. And Ledger in a really fantastic early season matchup in the third quarter with a slim 36-34 lead over Weathersfield. Of course, the Waterford-Ledger early season matchup, the game of the year, which saw Mikey Bassetto break the Waterford High School scoring record with a 48-point effort. And then Dev Ostrowski came back at East Lyme and set the East Lyme scoring record. It's been a crazy year here in the ECC thus far. And of course, we're going to bring you all of those exciting Ledger, Waterford, and East Lyme games in the future. So a big year for the ECC. And tonight we're seeing it. Max Lee, Hunter Pelargian putting on a, a little bit of an exhibition along with Joseph Beltron for the St. Bernard Saints. We've seen the shooting of Perilla and Deer and uh, Scott. It's been a back and forth battle, 29-28. St. Bernard's with a one-point lead here at the half. Come on back for second-half action. You are watching Game Day live on theday.com. We kind of have that chemistry, and we know where people are going. Like, I know exactly where Trin is going to be, and Trin knows exactly where Hannah's going to be, and it's kind of like we've been working together for so long that we know, like, where our passes should go and who's going to be there. Yeah, we've been playing, like, this offensive line has been playing together for three years, and especially on our home field where we practice every day, we kind of know exactly where we're going to go. And so you just take a look up, see where everyone's going. Sometimes you even have to look up because you just know your teammate's going to be there. Like, I always know Miranda's going to be center. Keegan or Hannah's always going to be going to the post. Trinity has been playing with Miranda now this is three years, so... Um, but I think, too, they play, you know, they, pl they play more than one sport together, too, so you kind of have that... You know, you know that that click, that camaraderie, you know, that carries carries over from sport to sport. A lot of the girls I play softball with, and like they're some of my best friends, so we know pretty much what each other's thinking, and so it's easy to like predict what they're gonna do and like where they're gonna pass it, which is really good in a field hockey game because you can really, it's kind of like 
you're looking forward and you're going there before they even pass the ball. We have been together for so long, like this group of girls on the team. Like I play softball with a bunch of the girls, so I've known them since I was like nine years old. So it really helps with the chemistry because like, say so like I'll know where Miranda is, she's right in front of me, so I'll know when, where she's gonna cut and where she's gonna pass it. And I know when Erin, who's on my left, when she needs my support. And so like we just have known each other forever, so it's really helped with the team chemistry and it builds over time. <laughs> Very high expectations, we've won ECCs. In the, for the past like nine years, which is a lot, a lot of pressure every year, especially that first game we opened against East Lion, which is one of our biggest competitors in the ECC. And that win really, I think it set the tone for the rest of the season. As the teams are ready for the second half tip, a slim 29-28 lead for St. Bernard's. Sports Doctor, after talking with Coach Jones and thinking about the first half, what are your thoughts here moving into the second half? Well, I think Coach Jones is a little disappointed in the way his team fired um, and executed. Um, you know, some cleaner looks in the offensive end, a little more ball movement, uh, getting teammates involved. Um, you know, I, I think he's a little disappointed in the way the team came out to shoot. As for Stonington, listen, just keep doing what you're doing. Knock down some three-pointers. And I tell you right now, Casey, in the second half, whoever can rebound the basketball and defend the rim is going to come out on top. I, I, I don't think this game is going to be determined by the three-point line. Well, that, you know, that goes against the early keys to the game by the sports doctor. I like how you've, you know, you're adjusting your philosophy. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Hedge, hedging my bets, And yeah. that way, no matter what happens, you were right either before the game sure. or at halftime. <laughs> so, Fence rider. Uh, I think uh, Stonington uh, has to find a better, do a better job of what you were talking about late in the second half, which is threatening the drive and kicking out to shooters. And I think you're going to see a, a, an uptick in the defensive pressure by St. Bernard's. And there we go, quick steal by the Saints right away. Lee pushes for the Saints. Drives to the basket, great defense by Perilla. But he's gonna draw the foul as Lee had a step. But that was a really nice job by the Saints. I do think you're gonna see a concerted defensive effort here by the Saints. Yeah, a little more aggressiveness in the, in the passing lanes, a little double teaming. Max League, not afraid to go to the rim. Mix it up, we're in the mouth guard out there, Casey. You know, yeah, young Max Lee. Got to, got to protect teeth. Got to protect the teeth. Yeah. You know, I, I think what I heard from when, from Coach Jones was that he was a little disappointed in his guards, his stars. Yes. You know, his two guys, Bal you know, Balarjan and, and Lee, and he says, you know, the, their guards are going downhill at us. Our guard, our stars need to step up. So I think you got to see a little bit more of the uh, guard play here from the Saints. His halftime speech was very brief too. I don't know if you noticed that. They were back on the floor very quickly. <laughs> boisterous, uh, boisterous, but brief. Perilla pulls up from the foul line and buries it. That's a nice move. That's his spot. RJ Perilla likes it there at the foul line. Yeah, he's got four points, Casey. And again, both, both of his baskets coming from the foul line extended. Rise up, smoothness, the jump shot. Up top, Williams resets for the Saints. Beats Scott off the dribble, kicks, corner, Svab passes up the three and goes back up top to Belarjan. Geary on Svab out there. How's that for a matchup? Lee with a left hand all the way to the basket. Silky smooth, Max Lee for two. Max Lee with seven points. Now you see Casey, out of the locker room, guards be more aggressive, take it to the rim. Three points, Saints lead. Scott kicks to Perilla in the corner. Jackson fakes a three, goes baseline, try to get it to Perilla, but it's picked off and Lee comes out of the pack for the Saints, two on three. And Lee took about six and a half steps before <laughs> travel was called. He lost the ball and kept going with the feet. Got the mouth guard in. You think he's running for a 20-yard gain there. Uh, I'll tell you this. I will say this. You know, I think Mark Jones, what he tried talking about too, is we haven't played Saints basketball to just yet. Our guards, our stars taking over. Lee jumped on Deer. Deer took the shot. No good. Out of the pack comes Williams looking to push. Williams pulls up from three. Got it. DeAndre Williams with a triple. And the Saints with a big six-point lead. Oh, nice look inside to Geary, but the little diminutive one. Williams over the top with the block on the much bigger Geary. Yeah, Geary's going to go up strong. He's, he's seven feet taller than DeAndre Williams. Just take it to the rim. St. Bernard's biggest lead of the ball game at six, a danger zone right now time for the, for the Bears. Deer will inbound underneath his basket. Up top it goes to Perilla. Perilla pulls up in the face of Svab and buries it. RJ's feeling it. 
Smooth, smooth rise up knockdown jumper for number 12. Belarjan, Williams back to Belarjan, long three pointer. Does not get the shooter's touch. Jackson comes out of the pack. Up ahead to Deer. Deer kicks out Perilla. Inside, Scott from the foul line is good. Nice look from Perilla to Scott. Yeah, good recognition that time by Perilla. Found Scott, hit the tough two in the paint. Luke Scott, Zach Scott. I should have taken that, uh, should have taken that bet. Belarjan drives baseline. Strong move is good, draws the foul on Deer and one. And Lennox Deer says, what, who, me? No. Well, Hunter Belarjan is not afraid to take a bigger man to the rim. And again, that time you saw the body control, the lean back, the fadeaway. Deer kind of caught off guard a little bit. The hoop and the harm for number 10. Going to see a wholesale changes here by the Saints. They're going to bring in a couple. The Deer comes out of the game for Stonington. And every time the Saints make a little run, the Bears step right back into it. Here's an opportunity for an and one by Belarjan. And then back to a three-point lead. Leading score in the ballgame, Hunter Berlarzeron with nine points. Scott, step back. No good, strong rebound, Jackson. And he'll be fouled on his way up. And if that's on Belarjan, they're going to say going up. It is on Belarjan. That's his third. And they're going to give Jackson two from the line. So... At the line, shooting a two is Marquise Jackson. They're saying he went up with a shot. And we're going to see Nate Avery check into the ball game for the Saints. I think there's a question with the score on the scorer's bench. Should be 39-34. That is the correct score. Mike DeMauro is keeping score for us. Officials in tonight's game, Thomas Katugno and Matt Hopkins getting it right out there. Jackson buries the first. 39-35, Avery into the game for Belarjan with the three fouls. That's not, a big, that's a different like, team. Yeah, does not like coming out of the game. No, that's a different team, though, when he's, on the, when he's not on the floor. Coach Jones is telling him, you know, it's kind of a bad foul. Oh, strong rebound by Avery up over the top of Geary. Six. Williams inside, Lee. Nice look inside to Avery. Pinball's in there and out of bounds. It'll stay Saints basketball. All right now with Belarjan on the bench with three fouls, Max Lee is kind of you know, thrown into that role of the guy right now for the Saints. And with a little help from Beltran. Lee dumps it into Avery. Layup, no good. He missed the bunny and a strong rebound by Jackson. Uh, you got to finish, young man. Scott drives baseline on Beltran and gets the blocking foul. And that's going to be on the floor, so it'll be Stonington ball underneath. I think Mark Jones is now going to be one of the guys in the league that lie, tries to lobby for the most calls and get fired up and correcting the officials on every call. That's what Chop Parker looked like 30 years ago. Yeah. Up top it goes to Scott, now to Perilla. And McKenna will reset for Stonington. Perilla likes to go to that foul line instead. Jackson, long three, straight away, in and out. Strong rebound, Avery. Those are good shots for the St. Bernard's defense being taken by Stonington, Casey, pushing them way out of their comfort zone. Stonington struggled so far in a half-court set. Williams out of control, tried to get it to Avery. Got fortunate that it was tipped out of bounds and it will stay Saints ball. Yeah, the defense from the Saints has really stepped up in the second half. Max Lita inbound. Last time they found Avery, but this time they're going to go long over the head of Beltron. Keeps his feet inbounds, if you will. Dangerous inbounds pass. Some dribbling, and now back to Lee. Lee looks for Avery, now swings it stop. Beltron, three-pointer from the wing. In and out, no good. And a strong rebound. I love Marquise Jackson's athleticism. Gets up and gets it. Prilla, just inside the three-point line. Short hustle play by Perilla. Gets his own rebound. Trapped by the Saints. Perilla's in some trouble. And he throws it out of bounds off of Williams. So it'll stay Stonington ball. And just like that, Hunter Belarjan coming back into the game for Coach Mark Jones. He is not happy with that lack of rebounding on the defensive end. So tr trust your player out there. You got three fouls. You know, trust you don't pick up the fourth. Scott to Jackson. Well defended by Lee. Finds a cutting Scott. 
and he misses the layup. Williams comes out of the pack with it for the Saints. Beltron drives on Geary, has a step, left-hander no good, but he'll draw the foul on Geary, and he'll go shoot two. Nice move by Joseph Beltron. Yeah, and good recognition by Beltron. No one has got a taller, slower guy on him. Take him to the rim, put him on your hip, go to the rim, and try to have him block the shot from behind. Let the big man play catch-up. Beltron will shoot two with a four-point lead. First one gets a nice touch. And that'll put the Saints up five. And Bodet goes into the ball game, replacing Avery. Mark Jones likes to shuffle his big men. Yeah. Keep him fresh. And we haven't said that too much from the free throw line this year. Nice touch. Back iron right on cue, but Bodet <laughs> came down with a rebound and he lost it. Perilla comes out of the pack. Stonington with numbers. Perilla tried to get a little bit fancy. Jackson couldn't save it. Now Lee pushes the other way. Ahead to Beltron with the finish and a seven point Saints lead. Oh, the push by Max Lee, the delivery. Joe Beltran and double figures for the Saints. Uh, McKenna with a nice move, but he was stripped by Williams and a smart foul by RJ Perilla that time. A momentum stopper as the Saints were off and running with a seven point lead. And Stonington's going to call timeout. Coach Luzzi up. He is seen enough right now. His team has lost any kind of identity on an offensive end here in the second half. Credit a lot of that to what the Saints are doing. Extending their defense, getting out, challenging passing lanes, Casey, making things very uncomfortable for the, uh, for the Bears shooters again. Yeah, crunch time right now. There's a key moment in the game for Stonington and Coach Luzzi. Down seven, momentum clearly swinging in the Saints' direction. Uh, they got to get a, a stop, and then they got to get a basket. Yeah. Yeah, stop at a basket, and an easy basket, too. Easy basket, easy scoring opportunity. Coach Leslie talking to his kids. Uh, how was your New Year's, by the way, my friend? I haven't had a chance to ask you that yet. Excellent New Year's. We uh, took the uh, fifth grade travel team of Colchester with Big Country out over to Bristol for a holiday tournament and uh, had a nice uh, nice holiday tournament, finished 3-1. and one and uh, Sure. I'm happy about that. Updating uh, a score at the end of three, Ledger with a 45-36 lead over Weathersfield. That's, that's a good, it's a good uh, early season game. Ledger has played a brutal, a brutal early season schedule. Tough schedule. Looking to bounce back off that tough loss uh, against Waterford in the Artie Corps Classic, and uh, you know they've had a couple of games here. Two games against Wyndham. The same game got canceled twice. Uh, they're supposed to play on the 30th, which was a makeup game from earlier in the season. So, did they reschedule it for Thursday? Uh, I hope so. Try to go. <laughs> yeah, try to go over three. Yeah. Uh. So Belarjan will inbound right in front of us, and he'll take the safer out to Lee. Looks like Stonington's moved into his zone. Three ball corner. Belarjan got it. Hunter. He is never cold coming off the bench, that young man. An interception by Williams. Williams to the basket to find Sva, but a nice block by Deer. Out of the pack with numbers. Jackson, three ball, short. Rebound, Scott, and he'll get a foul, and he'll get to the line. Good hustle points that time for Scott. And the Bears trying to end this run as they're suddenly down 10. Zach Scott will shoot two. You know, Zach Scott has not had a lot of touches here in the second half, Casey. A little rusty as he clanks the first uh, free throw, first foul shot. So indicative of modern basketball, though. The Stonington had a four on two, and the shot they just chose is a three. kick out to the three ball. It's just the modern game that we live in. Nine points, Stonington with some pressure. Easily broken in the corner. Svab, three, no good, short. Deer to Perilla and the push. Out of control, Deer, but he'll draw the foul. Rewarding the young man for going to the basket. Since that Lennox Deer is trying to do a little too much on the offensive end, trying to force the issue, head down, barreling to the rim. You pick your head up, son, and you probably got one of those shooters. And Scott, uh, you know, Anthony Fry on the perimeter. First one is good, and Beltran comes out of the ball game for the Saints. And 
Bergeron will check in. Yeah, you get a sense I like the guards here for Stonington in this game, but maybe the two guards for St. Burns are just a little bit better. I think it's DeAndre Williams who's played really, really well tonight. Yeah. Uh, we didn't talk a lot about him in the opening, but he's been great with the ball now. And he hits Bergeron and spins off a of deer, draws the foul on deer, does DeAndre Williams. He's vastly improved. You know, from his freshman year, his sophomore year, junior year, vastly improved. Remember how little he was just mm. even last year? Even last year he was tiny. And he's not that anymore. Terry Williams is kid. NFA grad. But the Norwich NFA kid uh, here at St. Bernard. Surprise, surprise. Let, uh, excuse me, uh, Stonington in the zone. Saints, nice job by Lee, but he couldn't handle it. it. Was Bergeron, and Jackson comes out of the pack. Ahead to Perilla. Let's travel. Finds Scott, corner three, is good. Zach Scott with a triple. And Stonington back within four. Up ahead, Svab on a great look from Lee. Prilla drives, tries to draw contact, can't, but finishes instead. No call, no foul, no travel. A couple of dragged pivot foots in the last couple possessions here. Pressure now, Lee swings. Williams, long three, no good. Rebound out of the pack. Deer had Scott, too late. Instead, Max Lee comes three on one. Zips by Perilla with the Euro step. Oh, the blow by by Max Lee. I didn't know you had it in you, son. Wow. Making his dad faster than his dad out there. Oh, uh, Perilla got to the basket, draws the foul. He'll shoot two. Oh, but a nice move that time. You're right, Lee with a, got 20 feet on three uh, big steps. Again, you know, you know, Max Lee's dad in the Norwich Sports Hall of Fame, quite a player himself back in the day, three-sport athlete in NFA. Can golf a little bit as well. So we can't hang out with him. <laughs> oh, I am. That's my New Year's resolution. I am taking my game to a different level this spring, my friend. What level would that be? Worse? Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, worse is a it level, can't too. Guinea. You know? It can't get any. It can't get any. It can't get worse. worse, yeah. Perilla knocks them both down, and Stonington's just not going away right now, Sports Doctor. They're only down four. Here comes Williams. Pelargian comes out of the pack, kicks it. Svab, three. Got it. Wow, the helter skelter pace actually played big dividends for the Saints that time. I like the dribble kick. The dive to the corner by Svab, and he hits the three. Knocks down the triple. His second of the ball game. Jackson, long three for the Bears. Back iron, no good. Rebound, Beltron. Up ahead, he had Williams, didn't see him. Instead, Belarjan drives to the basket. Drives, floater. No good. Tipped. And out of the pack come the Bears, and Perilla will wisely slow it down. They, they want to take the last shot of this third period. Oh, every time that Stonington has kind of crept back in the game, St. Bernard's has found a way to hit a big three to kind of extend that lead from four to seven, six to nine. Scott pulls up three, got it. Zach Scott starting to warm up here. Williams, last chance, Lee at the buzzer, short. And at the end of three, the Bears have got it back to within four. Fourth quarter action coming up on the other side. You are watching Game Day Live on theday.com. It's the Sports Doctor, Keith O'Brien. You want to hear from local coaches, athletes, and personalities? Well, how about giving my weekly podcast a listen? I mean, do you have a kid in mind, though, John, who would take the uh, last shot down by two with, uh, say, six seconds left? God almighty. I mean, I give you a look at sports from a fan's perspective as well. Do you have a problem with him pulling up from about 35 feet, you know, from the basket, Coach? Um, we have had talks about this. The Sports Doctor here on the day.com. Well, you talk about Zach Scott feeling it, closing out the third quarter with his third triple the first half, Casey. He has got 14 points, and when you get a kid like that starting to heat up a little bit, could mean trouble for the St. Bernard Saints. As we head into the fourth quarter, an animated St. Bernard coach, Mark Jones, not happy with just the execution of his team. He, he, he likes the hustle. He likes the effort. He just doesn't like the execution. They're not going to the spots that he would like him to go to. Yeah, and the execution will you know, take your seven or nine point lead right back down to a four or five point lead on the other end. It's a, it's 
It's a very, very small mar margin of error for both these teams, Casey. Williams with the basketball. Stonington remains in the zone. Little 1 2 2. Williams swings it over. Lee. They want to try to find Beltran. They want to go high low, but instead, corner. Svab. Short this time and a strong rebound by Jackson. Fry pushes. Pilarjan's a good on ball defender. Perilla has it now, guarded by Lee. They want Scott, but well defended by Svab. Tough place to pick up your dribble if you're RJ Perilla. 35 feet from the basket. A little run, a little weave. Perilla finds himself open on the baseline. Doesn't get the shooter's touch. And out of the pack comes Belarjan. Quick trap by Stonington, but Max Lee heads up. Long pass to Beltron. Williams passes up the three. Belarjan straight away. Got it. Hunter shoots it from three. Yeah, I like that look again. The extra pass that time for the Saints. NBN, nothing but nylon for Hunter Belarjan. Baseline, Fry, Jackson, pump fake, pulls up, back iron no good, strong rebound by Beltron. And again, this is the point of the game where the Saints can kind of take control, Casey. Beltron all the way to the basket for two, and just like that, the Saints back on top nine. Joe Beltran having himself a ball game. 13 points here on the road, the junior guard. Scott crosses over, finds a cutting deer for the basket. Great look, Zach Scott to a cutting deer. And again, those plays are going to be there at the rim for the Bears. No big men in for the Saints. Williams out a little bit out of control. He had Svab, couldn't get it to him. Stonington, other direction. Fry to the basket and finishes. Yeah, on cue, no big men, no rim protector out there for the Saints. Why not force it to the rim every trip? Lee, Belarjan, corner, Beltron, three, good. Wow. Have arms, will shoot. We are the St. Bernard Saints. Back and forth, seesaw action. The score picking up a little bit here. Fry spins off the pick, drives lane, floater is good. Anthony Fry sizzling in the lane and a timeout by St. Bernard's. Mark Jones wants to talk it over. They can't put away the Bears. Yeah, they can't protect their rim either too. No big people in the ball game and the guards for Stonington make it a point to get to the 10. 60-54, 5-27 remaining in what has turned out to be a back and forth, very exciting basketball. Yeah, game. and you know, when you talk about the stars of the game and Scott and, you know, uh, Perilla, and you talk about Bellagio and you talk about Max Lee, well, how about who else is going to step up? Joe Beltran has stepped up big time tonight for the St. Saint Bernard Saints. So, Mark Jones right now, yeah. imploring them to get into better positions yeah. on the floor. His issue isn't, again, isn't effort. He just doesn't like where they are on the floor. A good example right. was Williams drives to the basket, doesn't have anyone to, to unload to because his shooters went to the wrong spot. Right, right. And on the defensive end, Casey, he's looking for help at the rim when Stonington's going in. Couple of scores. Ledger with a big 58-41 win over Weathersfield. And on the other end of things... Congratulations. Congratulations to Mikey Bassetto. He would eclipse the 1,000-point mark for Waterford High School tonight in their win over Plainfield. One of game day's favorites. We'll be seeing him soon. Congratulations, Mikey, on 1,000 points. Yeah, not bad, kid. Happy New Year's. Have yourself a senior year. Beltran gets a block on Fry. Nice move. And again, that's the aggressiveness you see out of Joe Beltran there. He's, he's become the leading scorer in the ball game tonight. Not afraid to mix it up, take it to the cup, shoot the three. Very impressed with number three tonight for the Saints. Yeah, that Saint other Bruce, guy, Casey. Yeah, they're still a young team, are these yeah. Saints. And, you know, they're just trying to kind of find their way right now. Dump in, goes to Belarjan. He takes Deer, wants to go off the dribble, drives, kicks to, De to Williams. Beltran, they're going to swing and reset. Six point St. Lead with the ball. Beltran, got McKenna. Belarjan has the bigger deer on him. He wants an isolation. Take him to the rim here. Belarjan, crossover, little fake goes. Left hand finds Lee underneath. Hangs in the air, no good. And Fry with the rebound for 
Stonington, but he has pocket picked by Lee. Belarjan hangs in the air and scores. Hunter hunting in the Bears' lair. Doing good things at the rim. McKenna, crossover up top to Fry. Perilla pulls up in the face of Williams. Short, ball tipped out of bounds and it will be Saints basketball. Well, this is the time when you talk about execution in the ball game. Eight point lead on the road, just over four minutes to go. Get a good look on the offensive set. Get yourself a, a clean opportunity to score a basket to go back and play defense. Williams with the basketball for the Saints. Svab. Now instead it goes to Bolarjan on the other side, guarded again by Deer. Bolarjan wants to isolate off the right. Lee, a little floater in the lane, no good. Good defense by Deer. McKenna comes out of the pack. What a burst to the basket and the finish by Justin McKenna. And again, the Saints can't put the Bears away. Yeah, up by eight. Missed the basket on the, on the offensive end, come back and give up a layup on the defensive end. And a good, call, a good time out there by John Luzzi, too. Look for Stonington here to set up a little pressure off the make. Oh, coming out of the timeout. Every time the Saints go on a little bit of a yeah. run, it's as, I mean, they just, they, I think you've hit it on the head. They don't have any rim protection on no. the other side of things. They, have, they can't stop. Stonington from getting to the basket, which frees up the shooters. Right, listen, you're up eight, Casey, with the ball. You turn the ball over, you miss a shot. Then you come back and give up an easy opportunity at the rim. That's, that's uh, you know, one step forward, two steps back if you coach Mark Jones. You know, Justin McKenna is a sophomore Yeah. for Stonington, and he has got some quickness. He, I mean, he just burst it. I hear you, honey. I feel you. Oh, that's a New Year's Eve blues right there. New Year's Eve hangover. That's what it's doing in Times Square. We're counting it down. That's what happens. How much money would it take you to go to Times Square for New Year's I Eve? I did it once already. You did it once? I did it in you my 20s, which is when you're supposed to do it. <laughs> and you don't have enough money in either of your no. pockets to get me to go back there. Well, I've got a lot of money in my right pocket from last night. But you can't, couldn't get me to go to Times Square. Listen, though, I can tell you that. Sports doctors picking some games last night. I uh, heard you were pretty good. I, uh, I, heard, that you, uh, I heard you were... Just narrowly, uh, right on your heels, though, was yeah. a 1996 quarter. Sure. Uh, I like Alabama to close that out next week, too. That was easy. Alabama, That's I, yes. That was easy. I said yeah. that as soon as they got in. As soon as they got in, they're going to win another championship. Oh, there you go. Three, three decimated three, Clemson. Yeah. Last 342, up six with the ball. Get a good look here. On the, I'm surprised Stonington is not going full court. They're going to go into, looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. A little diamond. Yeah. Maybe a little trap as soon as the ball comes across half court. Yep. Force the ball out of uh, Belarjan's hands and or Lee's. Belarjan inside to Svab. Three Needs seconds. Cut it back out to Williams. Williams with a wide open three. Is good. Smooth and silky. DeAndre. And not afraid to step up and take the big shot. Confidence level has grown through the roof for DeAndre Williams. Three ball answered by Scott and he is on the money, he is locked in. 17 points for Zach Scott, leading away for the Bears. Four three-pointers. Lee tried to kick it to Swab, Swab, but the Deer got, it, uh, got his hand on it. Excuse me, uh, Scott got his hand on it. If you're going to overplay the basketball here if you're Stonington, you've got to dive to the corners because that's where the shooters are for St. Bernard's. Belarjan wants to take Deer again. And Deer's calling him out. Belarjan goes with the left hand all the way to the basket. And we're going to get a foul. Coach Luzzi not happy with that. He never touched him. He could read his lips. Oh, they're going to call that foul on Max Lee from the backside that time. They're going to send, excuse me, not Max Lee, on uh, Scott from the backside. And it's going to send Belarjan to the line to shoot two. Oh, okay. Coach Luzzi. Oh. Frustrated Bears head coach. First one by Belarjan is no good. Another way to let teams back into the ball game, right? Missed free throws. Yeah. Foul shots. Jackson back into the ball game, replacing Fry. Foul shots are not free throws. Free throws are not foul shots. One more for Pelagic. Got that one. Knocked it down. Seven point lead. Can't get you tonight, my friend. McKenna to Scott. Back to McKenna. 
Passes up the three, drives. Stolen by Beltron. The Saints pushing. And stolen back the other way by McKenna. Ball's loose on the floor. Up ahead it goes to Deer. Layup is good. Sloppy play benefiting the Bears. They're going to need a few more plays like that, Casey, down the stretch of this game to, to try and close it out. It's very tough against a team that's some good ball handlers like the Saints. Williams, floater, good. Clutch, big time. DeAndre Williams, wow. Most improved player in the league. McKenna draws the foul on Belarjan with a block. Listen, freshman year, sophomore year, growth through his junior year, just the, the confidence in the young man's game and the confidence of his head coach to have him out on the floor during crunch time. That's the fourth on Belarjan. Up top, McKenna in the corner, wide open. Scott pulls it up. It's good. Wow. Zach Scott is on the button right now. He can't miss for the Bears, and it's back to four. I don't think Zach Scott's attempted a two-point field goal since the uh, second quarter. Beltron working on Jackson with the left. Too strong. Nice rebound by Lee, but he loses it off his foot. Bears basketball. Tough Dang. set that time by the Saints, Casey, coming down. Beltran kind of forced that a little bit. They almost got bailed out by Max Lee on the baseline, but, you know, you've got some open people on the perimeter. You've got to recognize you got Belarjan in the corner, you got Max Lee in the corner, so if you're going to drive and there's too many bigs in there, kick it out, find your open man. Svob's on the, uh, on the perimeter as well. Four-point game with 128 remaining, and, and Stonington just hanging around, hanging around, making the baskets, and right now Zach Scott... He gets a look, and he is firing away. Yeah, he is the X factor for the Stonington Bears, and I'm sure Coach Leslie's talking about let's put our Let's put our sharpshooter number five in a position to catch and shoot and knock one down. Mark Jones is probably telling you, don't force things on the offensive end. We've got the basketball. We've got the lead. We're up two possessions. Listen, let's get a good look here. No one-on-three, no one-on-four hero ball. We've got guys in the corner. If we're going to get to the rim and it's nothing there, kick it to the corners because we have sharpshooters of our own on the perimeter. Yeah, Mark Jones is animated in the huddle right now. He is very clear with what he wants from his team. On the other side of things, Coach Luzzi, you know, maybe it's a gift to still be in the game this late, but you got to take advantage of the opportunities you're given. Oh, and you're not out of the game either with a couple of three-point shooters, especially with Scott right now. He is on fire, my friend. I mean, they make a basket here. It's a one-possession game. Yeah. Good ball game here tonight. Good second half. McKenna drives to the basket on Belarjan. Deer, layup is good, nice look. Belarjan couldn't D up on McKenna with those four fouls. Yeah, Lennox Deer gets a defender on his hip, but it's an easy layup. Almost a backcourt there by the Saints. Beltran, guarded by McKenna, drives to the basket, kicks. Williams passes up the three, instead pulls it in and buries it. DeAndre Williams has been clutch. That's backcourt. Oh, oh he's not happy. Uh -oh. He wants them to overturn that. They're going to talk about it. Be... Right, that's the, nice that's job, not the lead official's call. It's, it's a trail official. Thomas Catugno is going to go over and talk to Matt Hopkins. He's going to tell him, I think I got a tip that time, so we got to over and back. I think this is going to be stoning the basketball. I think you're right. Yeah. White ball right here, starting to basketball. It was a nice job by the officials talking to each other. So Coach Luzzi likes the call, and then Coach Jones is, again, like Craig Parker 30 years ago. Perilla inbounds to McKenna. Under a minute, four-point deficit. McKenna takes Belageron off the dribble, pulls up. No good, strong rebound by Beltron. And they're going to foul Williams. And he'll go to the line to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I'm not too sure Coach Luzzi wanted McKenna taking that shot right there. It was a quick shot. Elbow foul line extended, but he, he, you got a hot hand like Zach Scott on the floor, Casey. You got to try and find him. And he's being guarded by, Bilar, uh, by Bilarjan, who's got the four fouls. Yeah. You got to go to the basket. If Bilarjan gives you the layup and not wanting to give you the fifth, 
you take it. If Belarjan comes at you, kick it to Scott or draw Big. the fifth foul on Belarjan. Sure. Williams here. This guy has been the heart and soul here of the Saints, but he misses the front end of the one and one. Big miss right there. Still an opportunity now. Perilla with the basketball. Stripped by Lee. Up ahead, Williams. And that could be the one. Six point lead for the Saints. What a heads up play by Max Lee, the pickpocket. Perilla pulls up and buries it. And a timeout with 15 and a half seconds remaining. Stonington back within four. Boy, the intangibles of Max Lee, the pickpocket, the, the delivery, DeAndre Williams atoning for a missed layup. Wow. Right, you know, right now, Stonington again, though, hanging around, right? Hanging, hanging around. Hanging around, hanging around. Alligator like blood. Yeah. yeah. Alligator blood. They got to, right now, they got to force a turnover or they got to get somebody to the line and they got to take advantage of one more missed opportunity. You've got to come with some, court of, some sort of full court pressure here. One, two, one, two, two full court trap, one, three, one. You know, trap in the corners, pinch, you know, maybe give one pass, Casey. Then you've got to look for a foul. Uh, they're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but it's got to be quick. It's yep. got to be quick. One, three, one, full court, quick pinch, quick double team. If you don't get the steal, first pass gets released, then we're going to get a foul. Yeah, with, uh, I would do that this time. That'll be their uh, their ninth foul because after that, double bonus the, re you know, sure. the rest of the way. So you got one crack at this real quick with a chance to, to make something happen. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to look to double team with Lennox Deer, too. You're going to put him out in front. Deer you know, and Jackson. Yeah, long arms, athletic, trap the guy up. And again, one pass out of the double team, then you got to foul. You can't let this thing get down below. Somebody leak out and let this thing go for a breakaway or let this thing go below 10 seconds. Yeah, Saints with a super small team on the floor right now. Nice pressure. Lee gets it into Beltron. And a reach and foul by McKenna. And the Saints got lucky that time. Lee just put it into space yeah. and hoped Beltron could chase it down. And he'll go to the line. Will Beltron with one opportunity here to sort of put it out of reach. Yeah, almost a five-second call. It is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Almost a five-second call, Casey. And again, a ball thrown almost in the no-man's land. Big free throws here by Beltron. He's played so well today, and he calmly knocks the first one down. And Mark Jones is going to pull his Saints off the line here with a five-point lead. 17 points for Joe Beltran stepped up well in this ballgame. Second one is good. Inbounds, McKenna. There's Scott. Pulls up, and it's blocked by Williams. What a fitting way to end this ballgame. Blocked shot by DeAndre Williams on Zach Scott. And there's your ball game. A hard-fought 74-68 win for the St. Bernard Saints. They will move to 6-0. The Stonington Bears with a valiant effort in the Bears' lair. But they come up short as St. Bernard's had a little bit too much down the stretch. DeAndre Williams and Joe Beltron, the junior guards, stepped up in a big way. The heads-up play of Max Lee, Hunter Belarjan, and a team effort by the Saints. The sports doctor is going to effort head coach Mark Jones. And we're going to get a chance to talk with the winner after a hard-fought six-point victory by the Saints. He's got Hunter Belarjan with him and Beltron as well. And the sports doctor, take it away. Well, an undefeated group of Saints, a happy group of Saints, uh, Coach Mark Jones. Coach, the message in the locker room, I think, was pretty clear. Pick up the defensive intensity and finish the ball game. You no, know, no, definitely. We had to. Um, they were getting open shots. The, the guards were getting downhill. Uh, we weren't talking and communicating on switches. But the second half, it was a battle, man. The, these two teams are very similar. And uh, we came up with the win. You happy with the energy in the second half? You happy with you guys close the game out? Oh, yeah, man. This kid right here, man, he played his butt off, man. He had about last probably 12 points. You know what I mean? And I've been riding him all damn year, all over him, and he came out big today. You know, being one of the leaders of the team, Hunter, you know, if you're not having your night, how do you, you know, how do you rally your teammates and get them involved? Um, I know I got to be a spark plug on this team, and I know we got a lot of, a lot of scores and a lot of defensive players, so I know these guys are going to come up big for me. I mean, uh, it's not just about me. It's about the team. That's our motto. Um, and we're going to keep riding this wave. We're real excited for the season, and um, we're just going to keep playing hard like we always do.
You know, one of the things that we talked about before the game is who's that next guy to step up. DeAndre was one of them tonight. Uh, and Joe Beltran, big game tonight, 17 points. Uh, Joe, your aggressive style in the offensive end, is that something that Coach kind of instilled in you a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Um, ever since I came to St. Bernard's, he always told me to be really aggressive, uh, attack the hole, and just believe that nobody can guard you. And ever since I got that confidence, I just believe nobody could guard me. Coach, can this team get any better? Yeah, we can get a lot better. I mean, I saw different things that we can do uh, better on defense, but I'm just proud of this group, man. They show a lot of resilience, you know, we fighting back and forth and just, just making big shots. So I'm, I'm really excited with this group. Uh, Casey, last year, Division II ECC champs, they haven't missed a beat. This group of kids really enjoys playing with each other and responding to head coach Mark Jones. Happy New Year's, you guys. Good luck down the road. Thank you. Good job. An undefeated but very happy group of St. Bernard Saints as they go to 6-0, 74-68 over the Stonington High School Bears on what has been back-to-back -back very exciting games on game day. Of course, the New London High School girls over Capital Prep in a big-time girls battle to start the season. Now a, a well-fought six-point win. The rest of the schedule, exciting. The Ledger High School Colonels off a big win against Weathersfield tonight, and of course they're going to travel and place Batman and Robin, Dev Ostrowski and Luke Leonard over there in East Lyme. And then maybe the game of the year in the ECC for sure, and the state will be paying attention. I promise you, get there early to the X on January 18th, because East Lyme at Waterford will sell that place out. Ledger at Waterford, the rematch. New London NFA and New London Legend and, of course, tournaments galore. Sports Doctor, we are heating up here with the cold weather outside. Yeah, and I'm going to bring out the special jacket for that game on the 18th, too. You're going to see a little more style and a little more pizzazz out of the Sports Doctor. Casey, the one takeaway from this game that, that you know, in that post-game uh, post interview, too, boy, this team really, really relishes their coach. They are their coach on the floor. They stick together. They're going to find a way. And, you know, when, when things get a little rocky, they really trust in each other. There was some good energy in the corner over there with those kids and Coach Mark Jones. You know, Mark Jones is, was a special player. Uh, he brings that same energy, competitiveness, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and drive. And, and, you know, for a small school like St. Bernard's, uh, to not only believe that they belong, uh, that to feed off of the confidence and energy of their coach, undefeated, and you heard Hunter Belarjan say it, you know, they're just riding this wave, but yeah. they, they know that something special is going on right now up there in Uncasville. Yeah, and it started last year in the Division II tournament. We saw them, you know, pick off some teams that were a little bit better than them, and again, confidence and, and momentum, and, and again, this is, this is no smoke and mirrors thing about Mark Jones. This is not a young man who's come in and said, well, you know, I played at Dayton, I played at NFA, I played at a high level. He has earned the respect of those kids, Ed. You know, in today's day and age, that is a breath of fresh air in coaching. Well, you know, if you're uh, if you're my age, which you are, <laughs> uh, I'm actually a little older than you. you know, don't Saint, tell Saint Bernard's belongs in the elite of the oh, ECC. Sure. I mean, you know, it was you know the games at the New London, at John T. Yeah. Conway, when you know Will Flowers and Mike Bassetto and Harold before Presley. that Harold Presley, yeah. you know, came in and those gyms were filled. And to, so to see the Saint Bernard's, I said that to Coach Jones. I said, you know, it's the league's better when Saint Bernard's yes. is good. And, you know, they might be a small school. Like you said, last year they knocked off Plainfield, went on that magical yep. run. Uh, the league's a better league. Right now, though, the ECC has to feel really good about itself. Waterford, Ledger, East Lime have all played fantastic. St. Bernard's undefeated. Uh, NFA's been better than people thought. Yep. New, New London's been better yep. than people thought. The league right now it is loaded. Yeah, and I've had a chance to see maybe half a dozen teams. I saw East Lyme. I saw New London this weekend against Hartford Public. Uh, you know, I've seen Ledger, obviously, in Waterford. But, again, when you imagine, you know, Waterford's number nine in the state. Number nine in the state right now. And, and you know, and when you're talking about Ledger, you're talking about East Lyme cracking that top ten along with New London. There's a lot of good players.